Hello again, everybody. Welcome back to HemingwayLand.com, your source for quality, affordable land in the state of New Mexico. We are back today with another new property. This one down in the southwestern portion of the state in Grant County, just right outside of Silver City. As you can see from the headline, this is a pre-staked lot. It is a corner lot. It's got power. It's got underground utilities. And we believe that this is ideal for anyone who is looking to build a permanent home or a vacation property. Uh, either way, the property is suited for SFRs, so for all of you snowbirds who are looking for a warmer climate to migrate to, this may be the property for you. I will state at the outset that this is the type of property that you purchase, and uh, if you choose to develop it, you're going to be building a single-family residence on it. Because of the cost involved in such an endeavor, uh, we have the affordable cash price here of $19,500. we have also got some easy financing terms, which I will get to later in the video. I will also mention at the outset, if you are a person looking for a good recreational property that you can RV or that you can camp on, this is not that. This property is in a residential neighborhood. You can see some homes here in the photo. Uh, once we look at the homes later in the photo gallery, you will see that this is a more high-end neighborhood or at least high-end by local standards. So... With all that said, for those of you who are still with me, let's get to the specifics. This is reference number GRNM-1535, located, as noted, in Grant County, New Mexico, down in the southwestern portion of the state, more specifically in the Loma Blanca subdivision. This is a scooch under five acres, 4.62 to be exact, and as you saw up top, we have it priced at 19.5. Let's bring it up on a map, show you guys exactly where it is. As with all of our listings, GPS coordinates down here, click any one of them, and voila! Up on Google Maps, the property shall appear. More specifically, guys, the state of New Mexico shall appear. I always like to start wide on this. For those of you who are not familiar with the geography, a lot of people call our offices. How close, how far is this property to Albuquerque is a very common question that we get. In this particular instance, not close at all. Uh, property down here, if we right-click and measure distance, you will see is roughly about 190 miles, 3 hours, give or take, let's say, as the crow flies from Albuquerque down here to the subject property. That being said, the property does sit in very close proximity to the small towns of Lordsburg and Deming, as well as Las Cruces. Now, I forget exactly if Las Cruces is the second or third most populated state, excuse me, city within the state, or if it's the second or third fastest growing. I get the two confused. Whatever the case, it's a happening place. Las Cruces is about two and a half hours from the subject property, and of course, Las Cruces is not all that far from El Paso. Uh, of course, though, the closest town, the most notable town, is right down here, Silver City. Silver City is the county seat of Grant County, and we have some photos here to give you a better sense of exactly what this sort of charming small town looks like. Now, should be noted, guys, that um, Silver City is a town of a population roughly about 10,000. When you get into regions like that, develop regions like that, of course, you are going to have easy access to groceries and supplies to schools, parks, churches, medical facilities, so on and so forth. Uh, I'll get to that in just a bit. As you can see here from the photos, this is what we call local color, guys, local color. You can tell that it's kind of artsy community, and uh, it's got a kind of you know vibrant cultural sense to it. So if you scroll through these, you will get a sense of exactly what this neighborhood is like. Now, I will tell you that these photos were taken prior to a time when our photographer had a better sense of exactly what we wanted out of local photos. So let me just kind of zoom in here on the map and get a little bit more specific about what is available to you out here in Silver City. As you can see popping up on the map right now, the Walmart Supercenter is the thing that everybody always asks about because, of course, if you're building out somewhere, you're going to want to know where a Walmart is. You're also going to want to know where the nearest uh, um, hardware store is. So it should be noted that Walmart and Ace Hardware are very close to one, one another here right along Highway 180. Additionally, okay, every time I move the mouse over something, it's going to highlight, so let me not do that. Additionally, you've got the grocery store out there, you've got Albertsons, you've got the Gia Regional Medical Center up there in the northern portion of this little map that we're looking at right now. Uh, additionally, a lot of fast food restaurants, a lot of fast food restaurants have a presence out there, have some kind of footprint within uh, Silver City. So point being, a uh, fair amount of things to see and do. Additionally, Western New Mexico University uh, Museum uh, is out there. And uh, this is the hospital that I was pointing out earlier. Anyway, with all that said, guys, the subject property sits, as noted, about 10 miles, 10 minutes south of Silver City, down here just outside of White Signal. If we zoom in on the map, you will see that this ever so slightly carved out region here is Loma Blanca. Loma Blanca is the name of the subdivision. That's what the developers called it when they chopped up all this land out here. 
The subject property sits right here at the corner of Michelle and Otis Drive. And if you'd like to check me on that in the photo gallery, we also have the plat map as well as the Google Earth overlay to give you a sense of the exact size, shape, location, and general footprint of the property. But as you can see, corner lot right here. And furthermore, on the plat map, you will also see, ah, corner lot, 4.6 acres. Okay. Anyway, back to the map. So one of the things I just want to point out to you guys, uh, as you can see from the, uh, from the images here, there's power at the lot line out here. If you want to get an even better sense of this, shockingly, shockingly, this remote little region, if you zoom in on the map right here, or if you grab the little man down here and pull him onto the road, you can see exactly what it looks like out here. We, of course, have photos from the subject property as we get taken of all of our properties. But if you'd like to at least see what Google saw when they were out there, this is what the region looks like. Additionally, I would also say, surprisingly, you can kind of drive around on these roads. Uh, up and down, and you can kind of explore uh, both, you know, boundaries of the property, both the northern boundary as well as the western boundary of the property. Or, guys, you can come to the photo gallery and you can look at these fantastic photos that we have from the land itself. So first off, this is the entrance to Loma Blanca. It should be noted that uh, this is highway, hang on a second, because I can never remember what this highway is, Highway 90, I think. Yes, Highway 90. Uh, right over here. So paved roads until you get to the subdivision. The sub has you know, some pretty well-maintained dirt gravel roads. Either way, any type of vehicle is going to be able to navigate these. This is where the postman drops off your mail out here at the, out, the outside. Uh, additionally, there's a little fire station uh, within this subdivision. So if anything ever goes pear-shaped at the home site, you will have easy access to emergency services, or I should say they'll be able to get to you quickly. Uh, additionally, as we go through the gallery here, you'll be able to see what some of the neighboring homes look like. As I was saying earlier, these are some nice uh, homes in this region. I believe this is the one that sits immediately across the street here on Michelle. Uh, so this is a pretty nice neighborhood with some nice homes. As you can see, these are what would be sort of high-end homes for this region. And, you know, looking at these, you can also get a sense of what would be expected of you if you are constructing out there, where the bar is sort of set at. A lot of people will ask questions about zoning, they'll ask questions about covenants, and sometimes the easiest thing to do is just sort of eyeball what the neighbors are doing. Um, you know, looking at this house two back, I wouldn't necessarily say, can I build a log cabin home out there? I wouldn't necessarily think that. I would think they would want something more that conforms aesthetically to the region, let's say. But when you see this log cabin thing, it gives you a sense that you have sort of greater aesthetic options with what you decide to, uh, to build out there. Point being, single-family residences are what abound within this region. Anyway, this is the road at the subject property, and as we go through the photos here, you can see this is Otis Lane. These are the underground utilities here along Otis Lane. And also, it should be noted that the property boasts boundary markers at all four corners. Of course, this is a benefit to you, the buyer, because what it means is that you are not going to have to get the property surveyed and staked, so you're not going to have to drop an additional $1,000, $2,000 on that. So it's always nice when you have that savings when these boundary markers are left in place. Anyway, as we go through the photos, guys, you can see that it's a uh, pretty flat lot, easy to build on, easy to park on. Uh, that being said, of course, you'll be doing a little bit of... Uh, landscaping, I guess, should you decide to build out here, a little bit of uh, tearing up the ground, making things flat, um, etc. Anyway, as we go through this, you can see power at the lot line, power service in the nearby home sites, you get a sense of the vegetation that is out here, etc., etc. Additionally, the foothills off here in the distance uh, make for some nice scenery. Now, I will let you guys review the photo gallery on your own time. I will tell you that down here at the bottom of the photo gallery, we're going to have a drone video, and then we've got a second photo gallery. Our photographer was out there two days, uh, two different times, and uh, one time bad weather, one time good weather. So we figured we'd include all those photos so you could scrutinize what it looks like under good conditions and under not so good conditions. Uh, additionally, guys, down here at the bottom of the photo gallery, we have the overhead drone outline shots of the property to once again give you a sense of the size, shape, location of this piece of land. Now, with all that said, let's talk a little bit about zoning. Um, this is one of these regions where the county will defer to the subdivision or to the HOA that might exist within that region. Now, I will say there is no HOA out here. If you go to this little bullet point here, you could read more about this. There's no homeowners association. There's no annual dues that are associated with this land. That being said, there are covenants and restrictions that were created when the property was first subdivided. And if you click on this link here, it will bring that up on where is it at? I have 7 million tabs open. Here it is, guys. All right. So these are the covenants and restrictions that go with the land. Um, 
These were created roughly, I want to say, about 30 years ago. So theoretically, these are still in effect, though I don't know that anyone has actively enforced them. That being said, it is two and a half pages of what we consider sort of, um, sort of reasonable good neighbor policies. Uh, case in point, if you look at number five, no noxious or offensive activities. I mean, this is the kind of thing they chose to enumerate, right? Point number six, uh, lots shall not be used or maintained as a dumping ground for rubbish or trash. Okay, that all seems pretty easy to do if you're not a big jerk, right? Uh, additionally, point number 11 down here, uh, no mining, no mining on the property. All right, pretty easy to stick by. That being said, the ones that I do want to make you aware of, guys, are points 9, 10, 13, and 14. Number 9, no homes built with, um, well, basically minimum square footage of 1,500 is what they require. Uh, number 10, mobile homes, modular homes, pre-built homes, or homes moved onto the site are not permitted. They may be used as a temporary residence during the construction of the permanent single-family dwelling, uh, blah, 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 blah. So... Point being, something to keep in mind there, mobile homes, modular homes, pre-built homes, tiny homes would not be acceptable in this area uh, unless you have a building permit, unless you are in the process of building something. Uh, additionally, it should be noted down here that there are no restrictions on horses. So maybe horses can live out of a mobile home, but you can't. I don't know. Uh, also in regards to livestock, uh, no other types of animals, no other types of critters are allowed out there. We're talking right now about cows, pigs, and chickens. Of course, dogs and cats would be acceptable. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, but the point is, is that this is as strict as these rules get, as any rules that kind of uh, govern this region get. I would encourage you guys to uh, give this a read on your own time. Again, we have it linked up here in the table. Uh, we also have it linked down here. The point being, these are the covenants and restrictions that govern Loma Blanca. You may want to acquaint yourself with them in advance of the purchase. Next up, guys, let's talk about utilities. Uh, the utility companies that service this region are the Grant County uh, what is it called? The Grand County Public Utility District. And if you click this link, it will bring up their website. Where, now this is interesting. They actually have a really good website. We see a lot of utility companies that do not have good websites that are not incredibly informed of this one. However, if you navigate just a little bit, you're going to come to the Grant Public Utility District. I don't know why they would choose to abbreviate it that way. Electrical Service Connection FAQ. And if you click on that FAQ, it will bring this up and it will talk about a lot of the questions that people typically ask or should ask when they are building something like an SFR, when you've got power at the lot line, when you don't, what it costs to get extended, so on and so forth. Of course, this property comes with the immediate savings. The power already exists at the lot line, and there are underground utilities in the region. But this is a nice kind of FAQ to familiarize yourself with, uh, particularly if you haven't endeavored into that sort of thing before, or if you have built before but you haven't really dealt much with the utility company. This is the utility company that services the region, and they can speak to you in far greater detail and far more expertise about the cost and logistics associated with something like that far better than we can here at our offices. So if you do have questions about that, I encourage you to reach out to the public utility or check out some of the literature that they have on their website. It is actually a pretty informative website. Additionally, guys, let's talk about water. Let's talk about uh, how these homes are being serviced with water. When I see a home like this, I do not assume that they have a well they may have a well. I don't assume they do. Whatever the case, they're obviously got running water, bath water, clean drinking water, so on and so forth. Uh, my guess is there is some kind of utility company that services this region, though that is a little difficult to find information on. I will tell you, however, if it comes to actually drilling a well out here, you're going to want to contact the office of the New Mexico State Engineer and speak with them about this. This, of course, is the government entity that is responsible for all permitting of wells within the state for well drilling as well as water rights. So if you click on this link, it's going to bring up their website. You can navigate through this. You can learn more about this process. Additionally and helpfully, we have some PDFs down here, well drilling info as well as well drilling permit applications if you would like to familiarize yourself with that more. Now, my suspicion is there is a utility out there that does figure out a way to hook up water lines uh, to the house. My guess is these nice houses in this area uh, have water lines hooked up to them. If, however, they do not, this is the thing that you want to familiarize yourself with. Anyway, guys, it should be noted, uh, just one last thing that I want to mention. This is a pretty nice region of the state. I didn't talk about it earlier, but there's actually a surprising amount to do for a kind of rural southwestern New Mexico. Now, the very first thing, and let me just go back to this view right here, is the Guia National Forest, which sits right up here. One of the entrances is right here just north of Silver City. This is something like 3.3 million acres of forestry. That, of course, you will have the ability to 
uh, camp and climb and hike and hunt and general exploration of uh, right there in your backyard. Additionally, it should be noted that both Caballo Lake and Elephant Butte Lake, Elephant Butte is the largest body of water in the state of New Mexico, sit roughly about 90 minutes away from the subject property. That's 90 minute drive time. And of course, over here, we not only have Las Cruces about two and a half hours away, but also White Sands. White Sands, if you're not familiar, of course, the iconic uh, sand dunes that are out here in southern New Mexico, which again, you can explore, you can take pictures of, so on and so forth, but really a sight to behold. Should be noted, guys, that everything I just mentioned is linked on the listing page, Guia National Forest, Elephant Butte Lake, Town of Las Cruces, things to do, and White Sands National Park. So point is, down here in the southwestern portion of the state, there is more to explore than you might immediately imagine. Anyway, with all that said, guys, if you are interested in purchasing this property, Number one, we closed on this with a title company, specifically Western New Mexico Title Company. That means that we have title insurance. That means that we will be giving you a warranty deed. If you want to purchase this property for cash, now again, there's also financing available on this. So let me walk you through both ways that this can work. First off, if you want to purchase for cash, just come up here, click the Buy Now button. It's going to take you to a secure checkout page where you can put down a $500 non-refundable, guys, let me say that again, non-refundable earnest money deposit to initiate the transaction. Uh, basically the 19.5, this is going to count toward the 19.5. Uh, we're going to draft a sale purchase agreement. We sign it, you sign it, and then we submit it to the title company. The title company won't do anything until they have a contract, and we don't write a contract until we have money down. So what we ask for here at checkout, give us the name for the deed, give us all your contact information, tax address, etc. Agree to the terms of service and click next, and on the very next page, you will enter credit or debit card information. Put down that $500 deposit. Now, guys, we have a page on our website. It's called Buying From Us, How It Works, Buying From Us. And if you come here, if I went through fast through this, you can go to this page. You can kind of read more about this process. When we get into the price range of properties in this ballpark, anything north of $10,000, I strongly encourage buyers to close through a title company. There's a couple reasons to this. Number one, just general transparency. Uh, if you're worried about giving $19,000 to some, some dude on the internet, you don't have to do that. You put down your earnest money deposit. We let the neutral third-party intermediary handle the rest of this transaction, not only the disbursement of your funds, but also the drawing up of the conveyance documents. This is also important to you because if you're purchasing this property to build on, my suspicion is at some point a loan is going to come in handy. You're going to take out some kind of loan from a bank, from some sort of lender uh, to build on the property, what have you. If that is the case, lenders do not loan on land. That has not, uh, that does not have title insurance. So getting that title insurance through the title company is going to be an extra benefit to you. Whatever the case, we got a contract down here, guys, a generic version of one of our standard sale purchase agreements. Click that and you will see what we are asking you to sign in advance of putting down your $500 in case you are curious about that. Uh, it's a pretty simple contract, one page, one page for signatures. If you got an attorney, if you got somebody in the family, who knows contracts pretty well, you can have them review it. That being said, it's a pretty self-explanatory one-page agreement. Uh, once again, you sign it, we sign it, we submit it to title, and we let them do the rest. At the end of that process is when they request the remainder of your money, and again, they request it to them, and they disperse it to us only when the property has been conveyed into your name. So that's the first option for purchasing the property, guys. The second option, again, if you come here to the, to the, the Buy Now button, you click this, it's going to bring up, again, the exact same page, Enter all your information, but down here we have this little drop box. How do you want to fund and close this purchase? If you're a cash buyer, if you're buying for cash, if you want to close through a title company with a credit card, with a debit card, with a cashier's check, with any number of financial instruments, you would click the very first option here. If, however, you would like to finance this property, we have affordable terms, 5000 down, 450 a month for 48 months, and we're guaranteeing 12 months same as cash on that. Okay? So... Cash price is good for the first 12 months, and then there's a sort of graduating interest rate, if you will. Whatever the case, you pick which one of these you want to do, agree to the terms of service, click next, and on the next page. Once again, credit, debit card, put down the $500. Now, if you are electing, guys, to uh, finance the property, I will tell you that we've got a copy, a sort of generic version of our land contract down here. If you would like to see what the land contract that you will be asked to sign uh, stipulates, how the terms are written out, etc. Click on this link and it will bring that up right here and you can see exactly what this roughly 10-page agreement looks like. Uh, on this, you can see that we also have the 12 months same as cash written in here. Uh, additionally, 
What else? We've got some other terms in here. Who pays the taxes during the time that the property is while you are slowly purchasing the property? Of course, it tells you that you can begin, uh, you know, building on the property. You can begin using it uh, as soon as you make the deposit. It is yours to do with as you please, etc. And it also discusses some late fees here. Uh, but basically, you sign this, we sign this, and this is the document that demonstrates your equitable interest in the property while you are making these payments, whether it be for the 12 months, the 48 months, or some point in between. Um, yeah, I think that's all for that. Anyway, guys, if I went too fast in any of those details, uh, you can review this part of the video. You can come down here. You can read these notes. You can go to the page on our website, How It Works, Buying From Us, and learn more about the process. Uh, but either way, this is a cash purchase for 19.5, or it's a financing purchase in which you will have the option to pay the same amount of cash within the first 12 months and then pay it or pay it a little more gradually over the course of the next four years, let's say. Anyway, I hope all that's clear, though I feel like I garfed that up in some way. Anyway, all right, guys. So another really good property down here in southwestern New Mexico. Again, for you snowbirds, for you people looking to migrate, uh, this is a, an excellent climate down here in this general region. Uh, cool summers, not too, uh, not too, not too warm in the summer, and uh, not too cold in the winter. So ideal for many reasons. Hope you like it, guys, and we will see you in the next video.